liking to somebody else. <laughs> you know, I don't find this agreement. I, I think you already get that a little bit to your right. It's not at all that you have to agree with everything I say. Not at all. It's wonderful that we are critical. It's wonderful we think for ourselves, right? I really don't like rules, so I don't pretend to be one. So there will be things that you will disagree with, and that's totally fine. I want to stimulate you, though, maybe point you in a new direction. So as promised in my flyer, I'd like to discuss the how of change. That will really be a theme throughout the rest of the points, the how of change. When we want to change, when we want to change any habit, stop it, or do something, do something good, we often end up not doing it. We fail so many times. Why is that? Our researchers have found out that we oftentimes, like in the New Year's resolution, we set out to do something, cut a really high goal, so high, so wonderful. I mean, it would, it, it's either impossible to reach, or it's so high that, oh my God, that summit is just too far away. I won't do it, so we won't do anything at all. But oftentimes we do start and become disappointed. So one key, key uh, solution is to come up with a doable goal. So you think of, I want to look like this. I want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger for the men. I want to be as rich as Bill Gates. Okay, start with really high goals, fine. But now think of what you can do. What can you do? I want to be more beautiful. I mean, it's ridiculous for the men, maybe, but for women, some, you know, how about using lipstick? That would be one doable goal. That would be something we can do. Or using a nice shirt, or working out. Just something very simple. Something that is, of course, in alignment with who you are, right? Something you can do. Now that is your sub goal. Start with that and focus on that. Something doable, something you can do. And once you do it, you put your foot on the slide and you will love it. You will love the process once you get yourself going. And they found in research that we don't have to change everything about our diet or exercise like crazy. We have to start with one particular thing, one thing, like eat better fruits, uh, better, you know, just eat fruits and vegetables and work out for five minutes or something. Just one thing. And or after we like it so much, it somehow we just get going. They found it so much easier for us to continue to change once we do these things. There's a question. Okay, but one thing which I never will achieve is be happy with my wrinkles. <laughs> Plastic surgery. <laughs> How to do that? Well, you are asking a wrong person. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now, you know, I'm going to be very personal about this particular one. What is, when you, we all go young and have this perfect skin, we just didn't know it, too bad. Like this gentleman in the back, he has no clue how handsome. <laughs> we, we don't notice it because we now own in other things. I wonder if you really were that much happier when you didn't have these wrinkles. We think we were, they would make us happy, but actually, were we really happier? I mean, when you when you have this perfect skin, you're kind of oblivious about it. I, would you agree with me? <laughs> we don't obsess about it. Uh, even if you were a girl, <laughs> you just have it. You get used to it, and then comes the wrinkles. So you didn't feel happier before that, but now you're feeling unhappy about something. Um, fair enough. It's a loss. Yeah. Because we really, we see we're, we're going to die. <laughs> it's the beginning of the end. That's how it goes. That skin is slowly dying. And we get, get these wrinkles. And that's how it is. It's not. It's not. 
and to say anything else would be lying, right? It's a loss and it's painful, more painful for the usual woman. My husband, he's vain, <laughs> and it's painful for him too, <laughs> right? So, by how can we deal with our wrinkles? I think it would be a good beginning if we saw that they didn't, the lack of thereof didn't make us much happier. Second, second, to accept your sadness there, okay? Oh, so oh, that's sad. I'm losing my beauty. I'm going to die. That's sad. And uh, to recognize that and to look at our reality is freeing us up. Yeah? We look at it with kindness. And so when we slip into bitterness, that's the problem, not our sadness about it. When you slip into bitterness, when you when I go to the sports studio, to the gym, you say in English. <laughs> when you go to the gym and you see so sad looking faces and you know and then you know I always think, oh, you know, that's when you have a problem, when you become bitter about it. Now I'm asking, there's something underlying here. Is it maybe your entire attitude about aging that everybody must age and death, that we have to die? Do you have a problem with that, we have to die? Is death something you don't want to have? Do you actually want to live forever? Thank you. <laughs> Most people, I think, don't want to live forever. There are exceptions. So, Effect. Start your own ripple effect by choosing a goal that is achievable, that is doable, and then let yourself slide into an avalanche. 